from the milk, amen, to the meat. When Paul talks about the meat of the word, he talks about our ability to process the roles of Christ in our lives. Yes, we know him as a savior, but we need to move on from that because his relationship with us is more dynamic than just being our savior. Yes, I was saved from sin. And as a babe in Christ, I celebrate that. It gives me energy. But then I reach a point in my spiritual walk where I need more energy than that can give me. I need a relationship with Christ that rises and flows beyond just being my savior. I need him also to be my Lord. I need him also to be my healer. I need him also to be my friend, my counselor. Take spiritual maturity for us to cultivate and nurture that kind of relationship with Christ. If you keep him as your savior, it keeps you always going to church, but never being the church. Did you catch that? If he's only ever your savior, you'll always be going to church. But never holding yourself responsible for being the church. Those who go to church spectate. Those who are the church participate. Those who go to church hold others accountable for their spiritual experience. Those who are the church hold themselves accountable for their spiritual development. Those who go to church Blame others when they don't have a good time on that one day of week that they're thinking about God. Those who are the church bring the praise. They bring the worship. They bring the power. Amen. It's important to our spiritual development that we learn to process meat. Meat being understanding the various dynamic roles that Christ plays in our life. Meat being also understanding the demands of Christ on our life. Once I consume meat, I stop thinking about or continually thinking about what God can do for me. And I begin to think about what I should be doing for God. Amen. Amen. I begin to realize that I've been saved to serve. That the purposes of God through my life is to be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. I stop always holding my hand out to get stuff from God. And I start holding my hand out to give my brothers and sisters a hand up. I recognize what Paul teaches in the scripture. That we're all members of a body and none of us are more significant in the body than any other. But that we are joint supplying one another. I need you and you need me. I recognize when I become spiritually mature that I'm part of a family. I'm part of you and you're part of me. I need you and you need me. And if you're hurting, I'm hurting. And if you're in need, I'm in need. And if you're struggling, I'm struggling. Because the Bible says those of you which are spiritually mature, if you see your brother overtake it in a fall, restore them with the spirit of meekness. That's what the scripture says. I ought to help my brothers and sisters who are struggling, not condemn them. Or judge them. Amen. And finally so I can get out of your way. Today. I learned that. The purpose of. Christ in my life. Is to amplify himself. Through my. Life. I am a, a representative of the body. Of Christ. What the world knows of him will be demonstrated by me. I am a living epistle. And whether I like it or not, whether I understand it or not, whether I know it or not, or accept it or not, the moment I walk out of this place and I wear the label of a Christian, a disciple, or a believer, folks are judging God by me. What they know about his love is the love that I show. What they know about the good news of Christ is the news that I share. What they know of his compassion, what they know of his mercy, what they know of his faithfulness, they know by my behaviors and my action. 
I am the body of Christ. I represent the presence of Christ in the earth. But I also represent the power of Christ in the earth. So that when I bound down here, we'll be bound in heaven. When I loose down here, we'll be loosed in heaven. I am the body of Christ in the earth. It is not something that I go to, not something that I merely participate in. I am an organic part of the body of Christ. And whatever the responsibilities of the church are, <clears throat> and when I say church, I don't just mean this uh, local assembly. I mean the entire church that covers the face of the earth. Whatever those responsibilities are, they are my responsibilities. They are not just the pastors or the deacons and deaconesses or the choir members or the ushers. Those responsibilities belong to all of us. If it's the usher's responsibility to be hospitable to those who come in, it's all of our responsibility to be hospitable to those who come in. If it's the pastor's responsibility to declare the word, it's all of our responsibility to declare the word. Because if we're going to be equal in the body, then we're going to be equal in the body. And we're not going to assign a bigger share of the job to somebody else because of their title. We're going to understand that I'm part of the hand. I need to move like the rest of the fingers. I'm part of the foot. I need to move like the rest of the toes. I'm part of the trunk of the body. I need to help hold the body up. I'm part of the knees. I need to lock myself in place so that the body doesn't fall down. I am part of the body. And if you are part of the body, then be your part. Play your part. Bend when you need to bend. Flex when you need to flex. Help when you need to help. Because we need to transition from milk to meat. Let's stand. I want you to pray with me. Father, I thank you for your loving grace toward us today, and your wonderful kindness. And I know that you've met us here today. You've met us here from the very beginning, starting with worship and praise, the devotion to you, God. Every song that was sung, every prayer brought forth, every scripture read, every word uttered in praise and adoration and worship to you, Father. We know, we believe you've received it today. And you are pleased with us. We certainly desire that to be the case. But as we come to this moment, we are more personally reflective, each and every one of us, thinking about our own individual lives and where the word finds us. God, where it finds us strong and faithful, we celebrate you for that. Because your Holy Ghost allows us to do those things which are pleasing in your sight. Where it found, finds us wanting and lacking, again, Father, we come to you. We pray you would forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us from unrighteousness and feed us those things we need to make us strong in you. Where, we, where spiritual appetites need to be restored, Father, I pray right now, revival in the individual life. I pray revival in the individual life. Revival of spirit, revival of heart. A renewed desire to chase after Christ and to chase him hard. God, that's what I'm praying for today. That we would desire to read and understand your word. We would desire to have sweet fellowship and communion with you in prayer. We would desire to serve you with our hands and with our hearts in our communities. Declaring your gospel, your good news, the news of salvation, deliverance. Lord, help us. That's my prayer today. Help each and every one of us where we struggle with pride. Father, I pray that you would help us to become humble. Where we're holding resentments, Lord, I pray that you would give us a spirit of forgiveness. Teach us how to forgive. Lead us through that process as only your strength, your spirit can. God, have your way in our lives. And if there's anybody here under the sound of my voice right now who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and their Savior, who've strayed away from his more perfect way. You've done things that you know he's not pleased with. You've been living in the way that does not glorify God. If you are here today, come now. Come now. Conf